Welcome back to this series on my special interest, uh, I mean, Disney Channel Descendants. One of our lovely watchers let me know that the latest Isle of the Lost book, Beyond Wonderland, has a Barnes & Noble exclusive with the bonus content of an extra chapter. It takes us back to Aradon. It's the only chapter in the book that isn't set in Wonderland. It's set in Camelot, as King Ben and Queen Mal meet up with their other friends and a special guest. Chloe. Did I get her name right this time? Somebody finally remembers Wonderland, and of course, it's Mal. There might not be any villain kids at Ardon Prep these days, but there is still Wonderland. There are so many different Wonderlands in our world. There are retellings in books, there are adventures in video games, we can see it on our screens, and we can even hear about it in music. But there is nothing else quite like Lewis Carroll's Wonderland. Lewis Carroll, whose real name is Charles Dodgson, came up with Alice during a boating trip with three little girls, one of whom was named Alice. There's a lot of speculation on whether Alice of Wonderland is the same as Alice Liddell, and there's quite possibly even more speculation on Charles Dodgson's relationship with Alice Little. It is rumored that a rift between Carroll and the Little family was caused when Carroll admitted he wanted to marry the 10-year-old girl. The origin of this children's story may or may not be children-friendly, but it has lived in family households for generations and will continue doing so. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is one of my favorite children's stories, and I am a purist. I believe that Wonderland and the Looking Glass are two different worlds, just as Carol wrote them. Wonderland is a trip down a rabbit hole, while the Looking Glass is on the other side of a mirror. I seem to be pretty alone in this opinion. So many retellings of Lewis Carroll's worlds combine them as one. I've never come across a Wonderland that doesn't have aspects of the Looking Glass world as well. Even Red's Wonderland isn't without aspects of the Looking Glass. It isn't pure. In this video essay, I will explain. That's the meme, isn't it? I want to look at the parts of Red's Wonderland that come from the Looking Glass and what the purity of a Wonderland would mean. Red is the daughter of the queen, the off-with-their-heads variation from Wonderland. The queens from the Looking Glass, Red and White, don't appear in Red's Wonderland at all. They don't appear in Aradon. Soon into Red's story, she becomes friends with a boy named Chester. It is quite clear Chester is a part of the Cheshire family. I'm still trying to figure that one out, how an anthropomorphic cat has human descendants. Not long after meeting Chester, she meets his friend Ace, the boy she falls for. Ace shares his name with a suit of cards. The card knights are in Wonderland. So is Cheshire Cat. The first appearance from Looking Glass is Twee, a descendant of the Tweedles, a set of twins Alice runs into during her game of chess in the Looking Glass. Twin's friend Dora is more than likely a descendant of Dormouse, character from Wonderland. It isn't long after this slew of Wonderland and Looking Glass characters that Red decides to go on an adventure with Chester and Ace. After failing to throw a real party, Red wants to go to the part of Wonderland outside of her mother's reach to find inspiration for trying again. She sneaks away from her mother, who is busy planning the annual tea ceremony anyway, by using her headmistress, Duchess. Duchess is a character from Lewis Carroll's original Wonderland. She doesn't even appear in Disney's animation, and I've yet to find a variation of Wonderland Duchess is in. I'd love for y'all to let me know if you've found any. Their adventure takes Fred, Chester, and Ace through Told You What. These woods are meant to throw the kids off their path on the way to Bramble Bay. The woods are from the Looking Glass world, and Bramble Bay must belong to Oradon's Wonderland only. I couldn't find anything about it in my notes of Lewis Carroll's stories, and when I tried googling it, I was only offered a company in Australia. Bramble Bay is along the shoreline of Aradon's Wonderland, a small hamlet whose civilians listen to music and dance away from the dictatorship of Queen of Hearts. She'd never go to the shoreline, she hates the sea, she can't control it, and she can't control the people in Bramble Bay. People like Chester's family, Twee's twin sister, and two VKs who should be on the Isle of the Lost. But there's no reason to get back into that. The VKs show Red and her friends the things that can be found on the shore washed in from Aradon. Because the rabbit hole isn't the only way to Aradon, there's also the Pool of Tears, famously from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland.
In her wonderland, Alice cries the pool of tears because she's so frustrated by all of her changing. This happens just after she falls down the rabbit hole, but she spends the entire time in Wonderland changing and wondering who she really is. It's a wonder that Alice isn't in Red's Wonderland at all. There isn't much else from Alice's Wonderland that is in Red's. After Alice cries for a pool of tears, she finds the caucus race the animals take part in as a way of drying the tears off of themselves. They finish the race and tell each other stories. I believe an argument breaks out. All of these characters are animals of sort. Originally illustrated by John Tenniel, the characters of Wonderland, both animal and human, are all depicted with strange faces. It is speculated that Charles Dodgson had a form of prosopagnosia, face blindness. This is why he loved to photograph human subjects, Alice Little among them. Alice isn't the only little girl Dodgson was speculated to have unwarranted feelings for. I wonder if, with his face blindness, Dodgson saw the girls almost as one and the same. Reading articles and biographies of Charles Dodgson, it's easily understood that he was fond of the three little girls, Lorena, Edith, but especially Alice. But all three of them were on the boating trip where Dodgson came up with Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and all three of them were photographed by him. But from what I could find, only Lorena was photographed completely unclothed by Dodgson. It leads one to wonder what his feelings for each girl was, if he felt something of the same thing towards all of them. We have accounts from the little girls as adults telling us that whatever feelings Dodgson might have had, he kept things merely friendly with them. Though some would say Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is a love letter to Alice Liddell. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and then Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There are children's novels that fall under nonsensical literature. Everything about these stories feel like a fever dream to me. Alice spends her time in Wonderland chasing a white rabbit in order to find the beautiful garden she spotted just before she cried the pool of tears. She ends up being mistaken for the white rabbit's housemate and gets herself jammed in his house when she drinks another potion to make herself grow. It's after she shrinks down to itty bitty that she meets a caterpillar just her size. Smoking his hookah, the caterpillar asks her the age-old question, Who are you? Only she doesn't know. How can she know? This world of Wonderland makes no sense. She meets the Duchess next, a character who is in Melissa de la Cruz's account of Red's Wonderland, but not in the Disney animation, which we know Disney Channel's Descendants to be based off of. If Descendants was based off the original literature of its stories, Mal would never be able to transform into a dragon. So it's a wonder how the Duchess found herself on Red's Wonderland. In Alice's Wonderland, the Duchess is met holding a screaming baby. Eventually, the baby screams itself into a squealing pig. Did you know that the part of your brain that recognizes human faces is not the same part that recognizes animals? That's what I've read. Maybe the animals of Wonderland were more recognizable to Dodgson than the human characters were. It is after meeting the Duchess that Alice comes across Mad Hatter's tea party. It is always 6 o'clock at the tea party after Mad Hatter quarreled the time. I suspect this is why it's Mad Hatter's son that gives Red the timepiece in her Wonderland. March Hare and Dormouse are guests at this tea party. Alice quickly becomes tired of being their guest and finally comes across the garden she's been looking for. This is where Alice meets Cheshire Cat for the third time. It's where she meets Queen of Hearts, the King, and their children. This is where I stop and wonder if Red's mother is the original Queen of Hearts. Red doesn't seem to have a father or siblings. But here they are in Alice's Wonderland. The King is even in the original Disney animation. So, as you can see, not everyone from Alice's Wonderland has made it into Red's, but there are things from Alice's Looking Glass, keeping up with the Disney animation, that has Ouroboros, Jub Jub Trees, the Bandersnatch and the Vorpal Sword, the Tum Tum Tree that grows right outside Red's Castle, and of course, the Told You Wood. These are all things mentioned in the Jabberwocky poem in Through the Looking Glass, and I'm pretty sure I remember Red threatening to feed Chloe to the Jabberwocky. Whether Lewis Carroll meant for the Jabberwocky to be in Wonderland, for the two worlds to become one, they have in so many retellings of the stories. While Queen of Hearts is the only queen in Red's Wonderland, I know the Red Queen and the White Queen from the Looking Glass's chessboard appears in some of the retellings. One of my favorite book series, one of my absolute favorite shows, but I would love a world that separates Wonderland and the Looking Glass as they have always been written by Lewis Carroll. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll be the one to create it.